So here I have with me a very special person. This is my <laughs> partner, Alistair, and he is a videographer for our company, Timber Media House. And he's gonna join me on this YouTube channel to share with you all his video tips and tricks. So we're talking Premiere Pro tutorials, behind the scenes, business related advice to video, just all the video things. Um, so over the next couple of months, my channel will transform a little bit to share more video education with you, but we're still gonna keep the photo there too, so don't worry. But babe, welcome. Awesome, thank you so much for having me. Hi everyone, I'm Alistair, and like Amanda said, I am the videographer, and I'm gonna be running you through heaps of different tutorials over the next few months. And to kick things off, today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to do a morph transition and a few different ways you can actually do a morph transition. This is a step-by-step -step Premiere Pro tutorial on how to do this really cool and effective morph transition. Hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you obviously have any questions, leave them in the comments below and he will get back to you. All right, I'm here in front of my computer, so let's dive into Premiere Pro and I'll walk you through a few of the ways that I've used this technique in my edits and give you a few ideas on how you can incorporate this into your own videos as well. So let me explain what we're gonna be going through today. So first off, we're gonna be going through how I've created this transition right here. That's first and foremost, and that's gonna be the main focus of the video. But I'm also gonna to touch on a few other ways that you might consider using this effect. So the other thing you can use it for is to create something really sort of glitchy like this. And then finally, I'm gonna teach you an alternative way to create a kind of morph transition between two clips. And in this case, we're gonna be doing a before and after um, reveal. Okay, so let's start off with what we've done in the actual, uh, in the very first one here in my timeline. So clip A here, we've got the model and her head is filling most of the frame. And then clip B kind of sucks in and morphs into this next clip. Okay, so let's strip it right back and show you what's going on here. So we've got two clips, obviously, it's just side by side. This is what they look like played back. All right, just a basic cut. Now the effect that we're actually using here is called Morph Cut and I'm, you can see it right here. So all you're gonna do eventually is you're gonna go into your effects, type in Morph and take the Morph Cut and drag it on. But before you do that, um, because you'll get an effect that is kind of just too jagged and um, it's, it's not as smooth and seamless as it could be like this, I'm gonna show you how we actually modify our clips beforehand before we apply the morph cut so we get something that's way smoother. So what we want to do is actually animate some keyframes um, for scale and position so we end up, so this clip actually ends up closer to this clip. Now this clip is something that is already zoomed in, I've got a, quite a lot of room to work with if I wanted to, but let's just leave this as is. And I'm going to start by adding the transform effect to this first clip. Okay, so with that, I'm now gonna start creating some keyframes. So like I said, I want this clip to kind of shrink down and somewhat match how much space the model's face is filling up in the frame as best as I can. So let's decide where we want our change in scale to begin. I'm gonna create some keyframes right here for position and scale just by toggling on animation with, by clicking this icon here. I'm then going to come to the end of my clip and I'm going to create a few more and we're going to scale out something like that and I'm just going to adjust the position too. Maybe add a touch more, something like this and maybe across a little bit as well. Alrighty, so we can see now that the animation is already looking smoother. So the model's head gets to that size, which is really a, sim a really similar size to her head in this position. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking to make these clips just look a little bit closer in terms of the position of the major points of interest in the frame. And of course, that's the model in this scenario. Okay, so we've got that happening. Now at the moment, the change in scale and position is happening, happening at a linear rate. That means it's just happening at a constant speed throughout this clip. But what we wanna do is we kind of wanna make it 
zip into the next clip. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna change some properties for our keyframes. So select the keyframes over here, right click, come into this one here, and then go to ease out. And then on this one, we're gonna click, click our end keyframes. And again, come down here and choose ease in this time. And then we're gonna click this little down arrow here and we're actually gonna change the velocity settings for these keyframes. So we're gonna start with this one. Um, first of all, just click and then just drag out this little bar here. And then we're gonna grab this one and then just drag this one in all the way. Now, I'll just bring that down so you can see things a little bit better. But what we're looking at here is how the velocity of the, that animation or that change in scale is happening. As you can see, it starts off extremely gradual and then zips in really fast at the end. And you'll be able to see that happening now. So it starts off slow and then it zips in really fast at the end. So I wanna do the same exact thing with the position keyframes. So again, little drop down arrow. Let's drag this one down and I'm gonna drag this one out and this one in. Okay, and we're getting that same, that graph is still looking, is looking like that same kind of zipping nature where it's just increasing exponentially towards the end. Okay, so great, that's looking really good and it's giving that zip in effect that we're looking for. So what I'll finally do is I'm just gonna grab both of these keyframes and I'm just gonna bring them over right to the very end of the available space here in my effects controls. And so it's just not quite as harsh. Okay, but we're getting that, that really good effect that we're after. Okay, so now that we've got two clips together like this, and we are kind of transforming this first clip to somewhat match as best we can this one, it's now time to apply the morph cut. So go to your effects, type in morph, find morph cut and drag that on. Now it's gonna start analyzing in the background, so it's just gonna take a little bit of time, but it won't take too long, um, depending of course on your computer's performance. So morph cut has just finished analyzing and I've just rendered into out on here. And you can see we've now got this beautiful looking smooth transition where clip A kind of shrinks down, matches clip B and the morph cut really just smooths that out and makes that look really interesting. And as you can see, adding in those keyframes for position and scale using the transform effect um, was a really key thing in making that look smooth because if we just use the transform effect alone, we just get something that doesn't really look usable in my opinion. And here's how it fits in the actual edit where um, we've now added some music to it. So that works really well as well, even for the music here. It kind of, um, it has a sound that kind of goes along nicely with this type of transition, I feel. So it works really well for this edit. So moving on, I'll show you a couple of other ways that you consider using this transition or creating a morph type transition. So this next one is literally where you're just taking a whole bunch of clips and you just apply the morph cut between them. And here's this one. So again, all this is, it's literally just typing in morph into your effects and dragging that on in between two clips. And then you can adjust it as you please um, to get you know, the right length for your edit. So again, I would use this only in, I think, something that was really fast paced, something that might be quite glitchy in things because um, it gives that sort of glitchy feel. Now the reason why it actually doesn't work as well between some clips is the morph cut is actually reading clip A, or it's reading the end of clip A and it's reading the beginning of clip B and it's trying to find things to, um, to morph together and, and things that match. So because in some clips there's, there's not too much that matches, so this one we've actually got our subject in the same position as the subject here, so this one actually goes okay, but then this one is, going from this clip to this one looks really just broken up um, and doesn't work as well. So you will find that some clips work better together than others. So it's just gonna depend on, on exactly the footage that you're using. Now I'd like to show you one way to create a morph transition that doesn't actually utilize the morph cut effect. So I'm gonna show you one way that you can actually apply this and it's doing a sort of before and after transition. So in clip A in this case, we have um, our model and she's not wearing any makeup. And then in the second clip, she is wearing makeup. 
Okay, what I'm gonna do just really quickly is I'm just gonna apply um, a conversion light onto this just so you can see what the footage will look like when it's color graded. So I'm just putting on a light there. Great, okay, that looks a bit better. Now the way that I've actually shot this was with this kind of transition in mind. So I've actually had the model repeat the same two actions, um, one without makeup and then I've got her doing the same exact thing with makeup. Okay, so she looks up, she smiles, uh, tilts her head and smiles. Okay, so I might want this morph to happen kind of as she's smiling and leaning her head back like that. So I'm gonna find the beginning of the action or a few frames into that action of her smiling and I'm going to hit M to create a marker and I'm going to find that same sort of spot on the second clip. So she starts smiling and then I'll just go forward a tiny little bit more and hit M there too. Now what I'll do here is actually bring clip A over the top of clip B and make, make it so those markers are in the exact same spot. And what I'll do here is actually bring down my opacity of clip A. And you can even see already we're starting to get this kind of um, match happening. So now let's just make it morph. First of all, I would try using uh, dissolve, so cross dissolve. So that's just a very basic transition type. And you can see that that does give um, a pretty good result in terms of what we would be after. And of course you can finesse that as much as you want and, and make it longer, shorter, um, just to see it give effect that you're happy with. So about there looks pretty good. I might actually bring it in a tiny little bit more. So you could have you know some text on here and maybe a sound effect and you could really sell that transition nicely. So that's using a, a, the morph, uh, a morph type transition without using the morph cut. So that brings us to the end of today's video. I've had a blast teaching you some of these techniques and I hope that you've learned something new as well. And thank you as well for having me on Amanda's channel. It's really awesome to be here. If you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments down below. And if you have any ideas for videos that you'd like us to cover, leave them in the comments as well. That would be really awesome awesome because we're hoping to put out a whole bunch of video content on this channel now and it would be great to hear what you guys would like to see. Um, of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.